Hello everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar about the Blueprint Localization Team. Uh, my name is Ruthie Sinanayaka and I will be your moderator today. Um, I am the Social Media Manager here at Blueprint Technologies and Blueprint is a nationwide technology firm that connects business strategy products and services to transform businesses. And I am so pleased to introduce today's speakers. Um, first of all, we have Karina Winters. Um, Karina is the localization manager here at Blueprint and has spent the vast majority of her career in the software localization industry. And um, she was delighted to join Blueprint last year. And today she's going to answer some questions about our localization team. And today she's also joined by one of our translators and localization specialists in the team, Mariana Canero. Mariana is a Brazilian Portuguese linguist who joined the team earlier this year. But before we get started, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. So first of all, we'd love to hear about um, any questions you may have for us today. And um, to do that, all you have to do is ask, for, ask a question in the Zoom toolbar and we'd be happy to answer them. Um, next, today's webinar will also be available in the same link. So if you hop back on later in the day, um, you'll be able to watch this again. And lastly, we'd love for you to share this with your social media pages. So if you'd like to do that, um, just click on the share button and you can share this webinar directly on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you'd like to. So without any further ado, I'd love to kick things off by welcoming our localization manager, Karina Winters. Well, thank you, Ruthie. That was a great introduction. I'm really happy to be able to uh, join in this webinar today and um, can't wait to tell you about all the amazing work that we do in our team and the great people that I get to work with. That's awesome. So, Karina, when did you join the localization team exactly? Uh, well, I had a really long career in localization. That's basically all I've ever done. And I would join the Blueprint localization team um, in January of 2018, and it's been great. That's awesome. So can you explain a little bit about how localization differs from translation? I know those two things can get a little confusing sometimes. Yes, there really is a lot of confusion often around that. Um, so tra translation is really about converting the source language into the target target language. Uh, where it's important to respect grammar rules and syntax and all the linguistic aspects of language. Um, and localization is a little bit more of that. But since, since we have Mariana here today and she works hands-on with our projects every day, um, I'd love to hear what she would say about the differences between translation and localization. Thank you, Karina, and hi, everyone. Um, so I'll share a little bit of what I know. Um, the way we work, translation is a part of localization. Um, say if translation is about adapting the text to a target language, localization is about adapting the whole product to a target locale. That's why it's localization. <laughs> so therefore, this requires a lot of knowledge about the targets the target locale's culture and traditions, and a good sense of what is relatable or not for that particular audience. Translation is the core of our work. Um, we are very quality driven when performing our tasks, and it is our highest priority to deliver high quality translation. It sure is. <laughs> That's so awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about the structure of the localization team and really how did everything really get started within Blueprint? Um, sure. So we're only a little over three years old and this makes the localization team here at Blueprint uh, a relatively young player here in our industry, um, but we're growing super fast. Um, we have localization and translation professionals from well over 20 nationalities now. Um, and we're continuing to our, expand our set of languages. Um, when our team was formed, the focus was really um, just primarily translation. And um, as a matter of fact, um, the majority of our people, well, all of our people have very strong linguistic skills and have that type of a background. 
uh, some as came to us as professional translators, and uh, others have come to us as writers and journalists. Wow. Um, yeah, it's super cool, the, the level of, um, of excellence and uh, the backgrounds, the diverse set of backgrounds that everybody has, uh, but all focused on linguistic excellence. Um, so since then, we've really become uh, more and more of a localization team and are doing, providing more and more localization solutions. Um, and in order to support this, we have localization, um, but we have, we have leads, we have an engineering team. Um, we also have over um, two dozen openings currently uh, where we're looking for, um, for folks, for professional translators, writers, journalists to join us. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, we also have a, a most, almost all of us, what makes us unique is also that uh, we are an in-house team operating out of Bellevue, and so we work in a big open workspace and um, are um, highly collaborative. Um, we do have a few uh, remote positions that are located in, in other states, but all of us work according to the Pacific Northwest time zone. That's great. Um, okay, so now that we've learned a little bit more about localization, the structure of your team, um, do you mind just telling us a little bit about what they do? Uh, well, the type of content that we work on is really diverse. It's um, ranging from highly technical content to highly creative content. Um, uh, we do, um, the types would be like marketing collaterals, um, subtitling, um, in, intense developer documentation, and basically anything that comes our way. Uh, in other words, as far as the content that we uh, translate, it is never boring. <laughs> That's always great to hear. Um, and how do you think the localization team really meshes well with the Blueprint culture? Well, Blueprint has this um, wonderful philosophy of N plus one. Um, that was actually from what I understand was feedback from one of our early clients that was before my time here at Blueprint, but so the story goes, a client once came to us after we had uh, completed our delivering uh, the project, a project to them. And they said, man, we just love working with Blueprint because Blueprint always gives us, doesn't just give us N, they give us N plus one. And here in the localization team, um, we do that too. Um, for example, um, we recently had a project where the client had, um, had handed us some super high priority content uh, with uh, extremely aggressive deadlines. And we rolled our sleeves up and we completed um, the task that we were provided. But additionally, we were able to provide a whole bunch of quality assurance and testing um, in addition. So again, that was just how um, we didn't give just N, we gave N plus one. My goal as a manager uh, of the team is also to apply that same philosophy to each of the individuals who work here. I really want everybody to, uh, to love their jobs. That's, I see that as the primary measure of my success is just um, everybody enjoy coming to work every day and working on the content that they have and working in this team. I know I do. I love that. Um, so now on to Mariana. Um, can you tell us what does a regular day in the life of a localization team specialist really um, do on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, of course. Um, so usually when we start our day, we talk to our language partners. We always work in teams so that we make sure there's quality to our translations. We cross check on each other's work. So in the beginning of the day, we look at the tasks we have. We divide them up amongst the, the team members and then we get to work. <laughs> we cross things off our list according to a priority uh, to, according to the priority of each task. And we constantly communicate and collaborate in order to deliver the best product we can. And this is what makes us a well-oiled machine. These are the essentials to our work, communication and collaboration. That's awesome. So how is this team structured? 
Uh, well, we um, we started out smaller and a fairly flat organization, and since then, um, we, that wasn't really able to sustain our growth. So we have uh, folks who are promoted into team lead positions. Um, we formed an engineering team. Um, they do a wide range of really exciting things. Um, overall, I encourage my team to think big and um, follow their dreams, tell me their dreams, tell me the, their leads, their dreams, and um, take risks, which is absolutely vital to innovation. Um, and to enable this, we, um, you know, we, we can we form work groups uh, that are focused on different areas that people are interested in that also support uh, our organizational growth. Um, whether it's PI or quality assurance, um, communication. Uh, basically, I look within the team and identify interests and say, well, let's, let's go see what we can do with that. And that just works really well. Uh, it's especially amazing to see that the passion that folks bring in this type of an, of an environment where innovation is really um, live and breathing every single day. So it's all about, um, or whether it's about solving problems or brainstorming about the next big thing, it's like, it's really marvelous to watch. I, I love that you bring up innovation because that really is the core of what Blueprint Technologies is all about. Um, so can you tell us a little bit um, about the team and company's culture? Yeah, well, um, we, we work hard and we play hard um, and we, uh, from both speaking for myself and from what I see every day, um, everybody takes both work and play really seriously, and we do it together. Um, just like anywhere else in our industry, we sometimes, like I mentioned before, really have to roll up our sleeves to get the job done. But overall, uh, from what I've seen, um, our work-life balance is really among the best. And again, I've been in the industry for a long time, and um, you know, a lot of folks um, on, a, on much of the time are able to just close their laptops, go home and call it a day. Um, so, well, and then some of the fun things we do, um, for example, um, you could, should come join us next Tuesday, um, Ruthie. We are having uh, our international potluck, which we have every month. Um, I really like to eat, and so do a lot of the other folks on the team, and the a wide variety of foods that we bring to share with one another is truly amazing. Uh, on Fridays, we always have gaming sessions. Um, we also love to, I don't know, whip out. I brought a, a big thing, a giant Jenga the other day, and so we've been uh, playing with that. Um, we do um, a happy hour on Friday evenings where we go out and play games at one of our local, uh, local places here in Bellevue. Um, so we just really have a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I, I probably sound a little excited, but um, I, I am truly, and it's so easy to be um, because it's not just mine, it's, it's totally the overall vibe of the team. Yeah, right? absolutely. It's, it's awesome. It's so great to hear. Everyone loves that work hard, play hard environment. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I hear we have some pictures. Um, do you mind just going through a couple of them? Well, let's see. Um, oh, that was Halloween. Um, so, yeah, a whole bunch of us dressed up. Um, and yeah, as you can see, like we've got Harry Potter and um, who, what's, what's Gabriel? He's like, no, that's not, that's, that's not Peter Pan. I think it's Zelda. It's, no, it's not Zelda. It's the, the, the main guy from Zelda, which we yeah. have got really We here. shouldn't know his <laughs> name, but yeah, Gabe is the gamer. Some of the gamers are on our team. Oh, Luigi? Yeah. So, and uh, you know what? We should have, I'm not as much of a hardcore gamer as some of the folks that are in the team. Um, but you know, so um, gosh, I can't remember what was going on here. Um, oh, this was after one of our. This was one of our parties, and we just had the little photo booth set up. And um, um, yeah, it was. Well, this was a scavenger hunt recently, um, where we were all split up into teams, and 
had a bunch of fun things to do there. And this is when we were at headquarters for after the scavenger hunt. And Ruthie, I think you took this photo. I think this was the first time we met you. I did, yeah, that was one fun day. <laughs> we ate, 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 played. Um, this was also the scavenger hunt. Ah, there's the giant Jenga. I realized that giant Jenga, that it's a lot different um, than little Jenga. Um, when the tower comes down, you kind of have to jump out of the way. So it comes with a waiver form that we have to sign. <laughs> that I probably should. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for going over all of that. Um, and can you tell us a, bit, a little bit about where people can find um, more information or learn about some opportunities of either joining the team or however they want to get involved? Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So we have a lot going on, especially this week. Uh, always, in, so in general, and always you can go to uh, bpcs.com uh, and go all the way down to the bottom of the page. There is a careers link. And then on the careers page, you can go to the localization section. And you can see all the different roles that we have open. And uh, this Saturday, uh, we're really excited to um, once again attend the Notice Language and Job Fair. It's going to be at the Museum at Flight uh, from 12 to 6 p.m. And this year it's super exciting because not only is it on a Saturday over the weekend, it's also in conjunction with the Notice Annual Conference. Um, so yeah, I look forward to being there with uh, three people from my team, including Mariana, and one of our recruiters will be there. Very exciting. That's so awesome. And so anyone who wants to um, learn more, um, again, like Karina said, just go to bpcs.com slash careers and scroll all the way down um, to the localization section. Um, and also, um, we'd love to start taking some questions. If anyone has them, please send them through on the chat and I would love to um, ask them. We'll just wait a couple seconds um, while people get their questions in. Okay, so one question we have. So what are deadlines like, Karina? Uh, well, the deadlines, um, so it depends. We could have um, lower priority projects that might span over a few weeks or months even. Um, we have other projects that, um, you know, might have a higher priority. Um, and well, so here, here, what, here is basically the thing. Our projects come in and we prioritize them and um, see what is most important and do that first. Um, and it really requires sort of a, a, a constant juggling because we might be uh, focused on, on one project and then get slammed by five others that are due more quickly. Uh, the cool thing about that is that um, between the leads, well, and the team in general has gotten really good about um, uh, sort of scheduling, the scheduling skills and techniques. So um, have, have really um, uh, improved or solidified. And so, um, yeah, we're able to deliver this. The, the really cool thing I think also is that we, since we are quality driven, um, we really pay attention to, um, to having enough time to complete a project and still deliver it in quality. And so we work together with, um, with the client to be able to, um, you know, give the trade-offs. Like mm -hmm. if, uh, because of course we know that just adding extra hours is, does not produce, necessarily produce quality. So that's, I think, I think that sums it up yeah, on deadlines. No, definitely. It's probably a little rambly my response, yeah. <laughs> but. Okay, so what are the general responsibilities of a linguist in the team? Well, I think that's a great question for Mariana. <laughs> yeah, Mariana, she is take a it away. So some of our responsibilities, I mean, the most immediate ones is getting content translated 
and or localized. Some of the content we only get to translate, some of the content we get to go all the way into the localization process. What that involves is having knowledge about the product, doing lots and lots of research, and collaborating with your language partners, and sometimes across other languages as well. I mean, I'm a Brazilian Portuguese translator, localization specialist, but I often collaborate with the Spanish team or the French team or the Italian team because of how close our languages can be. So I would say, yeah, the most important is knowledge about product, lots of research and collaboration. Awesome. Thank you so much for answering that, Mariana. Um, so another question came in. Do you use freelancers? Um, not currently. As okay. I said before, we are a, um, a fully in-house team. Um, everybody is a full-time employee with all the benefits that goes along with that. Um, I don't know what the future might bring, but, at, but as of right now, um, no, we're um, all full-time employees. Okay, thank you. And so someone says, I know that you're hiring right now and you prefer someone with online gaming experience. Can you elaborate on that? Well, we do um, currently work on a lot of gaming content. And so it really depends on the makeup of the individual teams. Um, but yeah, we play a lot of games and we work on a lot of gaming content. Um, in addition to the technical content and all the other things that I mentioned before. Okay. And we have another person saying, oh, can I add, can I add yeah. that? Um, so it's one of those things when you read in a job description, it's listed under preferred. It's not an essential requirement. Okay, that's for great to most know. Languages. Awesome. Um, another uh, question came in. I am interested in your quality control procedure. How does your team approach quality control and localization? Um, well, that gets a little bit into our uh, the internal workings of, of our team, and I don't know that this is the best place to answer that. Um, what I can say is that our, we have top-notch professional linguists, and that in itself um, means that we have people that already by their very nature, their profession, are intensely interested in quality. And um, I think that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, right now. thank you. And what type of industries require localization? Are there many pros and cons to working with a multicultural team? Well, that sounds like two questions. <laughs> uh, uh, let's answer so the first one. So what type of industries require localization? Well, and um, the global global view of the world, what industry doesn't require localization, of course, is the way I think, because that's been my life and breath for my entire career. Um, and so when we look at software, um, you know, English is really just another language. Um, and uh, I mean, here in the uh, Pacific Northwest, particularly in the Seattle area, the greater Seattle area, um, we have a very much multicultural environment in general. So whether it's governments needing different forms um, uh, translated and so that they can be accessible to the entire community, um, or whether that's um, a, um, a software user in another country or just that speaks another language um, that wants something available to them. Um, again, English is just another country. Um, I, I don't know what the current statistics are, but I think it's usually, well, depending on the software, depending on the product, uh, more than 60% of the customers will be international customers. And you have to think about even the English version. Um, will the English be understood? Is it focused on North America or will it be understood in the UK or Australia or um, it, and other contents uh, where people want to use the English product because no um, of their local language versions are available. But then that's actually more into globalization. Um, it's kind of a different topic. So okay. And um, another question: um, Are there any pros and cons of working with a multicultural team? Oh well, I love it. It's my my favorite way to work. That is why it's my profession. Um, 
So the pros is just the rich cultural diversity that we have um, and being able to learn about one another's cultures. And, and uh, you know, everybody here on the team clearly has an interest in that or they wouldn't have, they wouldn't be on the team. Um, and uh, let's see, it's the cons. Well, um, there's a lot of people from different cultures that are working together, right? So we get to learn those cultural differences. And uh, sometimes that can be a little bit of a snag, um, but I see that actually as less of a, um, you know, it doesn't really play out here that much because we're all doing, working on the same things um, and having fun. So um, the cons, yeah, Mayan? I would say that even the cultural differences present an opportunity for growth for right. all of us yes. because we all get to learn about how other cultures function. So it's a great opportunity for growth for those who are actually interested in it. And I think we have a pretty amazing group of people that is very sensitive to all of that. Well, because we have to figure every single person on this team has come from someplace else. Yeah. And so, uh, the curiosity and exploring other cultures is inherent. Yeah. So let's um, not forget about the amazing potluck. <laughs> and, uh, right, right. Thank you, Mariana. You summed that up actually much better than I was doing. So thank you. Awesome. Um, so do you think, uh, or what do you think your localization team will look like in the next five years? Oh, the sky's the limit, I think. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think we're going to keep growing both in size, well, I know just because of the number of positions that we have open, um, but also uh, there's just so many opportunities in localization. And um, so, you know, I don't know exactly, but I'm excited to find out. That's awesome. Um, and what kind of text do you translate? Oh, Mariana. Yeah, so like we said, uh, I think actually in the, we ended up going through that, but it doesn't hurt to go back there and talk about it again. Uh, most of the work we do, it can go from creative text to marketing col collateral to text aimed at developers very technical stuff. So we go through a variety of different content and that's very exciting because it plays off of each of our strengths individually mm -hmm. and we can always help each other out. There's always someone who's gonna be better at the technical stuff. There's always someone who's gonna know a little bit more about the games. There's always the creative people who are gonna go into making that text really interesting for their own audience. So yeah, it's a variety of things and it's really exciting. That's awesome. Um, and Mariana, a question just came in for you. Um, what do you find exciting about being a part of the localization team? Oh, so much. Honestly, like I, I love it here. Um, I love it that we get to work, as I've just said, with such diverse content. I love it that I get to work with people from all over the world. Um, I feel like it was really great to be welcomed into this team. It's a very close knit collaborative team with very generous people with our time and their knowledge. So I really love that. Um, I love it that we really do have great balance between our work life and our personal life. Um, I think that's super valuable. And that was one of the main things that I wanted in my career. Um, yeah, that's um, awesome. I always get to learn something new. So that's great. That's great. And potlucks and giant Jenga. <laughs> potlucks and giant Jenga, please, every day. Food is <laughs> always good, especially when it's from all over the world. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, um, does anyone else have any last minute questions before we um, wrap it up? Okay. Um, oh, actually, we got one more in. Uh, what kind of translation tools um, does the team use? Um, a whole bunch of different translation tools. We use cat tools, we use some proprietary tools, we use some tools that we've developed. So I would say a lot of the standard tools known within the industry. Great. 
Okay, well, um, Karina, I think uh, we are good now. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We really appreciate you being here. Um, Karina, Mariana, thank you so much for being here and answering all the questions. Thank you. Ruthie, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. That's awesome to have you guys here and just talk more about your team. And we're just so, so grateful for you. Um, we appreciate everyone else being on the call. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us. You can go on to bpcs.com and fill out a contact form if you have any further questions. Um, maybe you are looking at joining the team. Um, again, you can go to bpcs.com slash careers and then scroll down to localization and you can fill out an application there. If you are a company looking to um, hire us, um, feel free to contact us as well. Um, and thank you so much for um, being on the call today and join us again for next time.